So I'm doing well. How about you, Josh? I'm doing really good. I'm here just to make you feel good, just because you look good today. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Thank you. It's always great to be Keep back. Keep it up, by the way. I will do that. It's great to be back, helping our, uh, our family make better investing decisions. And Al, we have a jam-packed show here today. We're going to talk a lot about a few, a few different topics, I should say. We're going to get into financial literacy, or lack thereof. But there's a lot going on in these markets, and we want to make sure people understand some of this terminology so they can make mm-hmm. better investing decisions. We had a huge IPO last week with uh, Coinbase. We know what's been happening with that stock. It's been going down, down, down. I wish there was a song for that. I'm sure there is. Um, on Thursday, there was a capital gains proposal, which rocked the markets. Mm-hmm. Big down mm-hmm. day on Thursday. But guess what? That lion came roaring back. But still, the markets all ended up down for the week, just slightly. Now, let's talk about that. What are some of the things that are going on in these big movements up and down, but how can we also participate in those up and those down markets intraday? Yeah, I think what we're seeing is just kind of an indication that we're in a very sensitive market right now, and it doesn't take a lot to cause a a big move up or down. You mentioned the, uh, the capital gains tax proposal. Remember, it was just a proposal. It wasn't a bill that got passed. It was just news that people reacted to. And, and it really was. It shouldn't have come as a surprise because it was part of Biden's campaign promise. So that shows you what news can do and how emotions can impact the market. And then what happens? That's actually what the uh, the, the Wall Street big boys, the, the pros, the smart money, they look forward to that. They take advantage of those emotions. When that hit the market on Thursday, because we were heading towards probably an up up market or up week for the market, and then that turned things around. But the the big money was just waiting, and then they bought the dip, and it's that's that really what's been happening, right? So it it really is important to understand that uh, people react emotionally to things, and to be truly consistently safe in these markets, you have to learn how to control your your emotions. But this next week, what do we have to look forward to? Think about volatility and think that it's going to come roaring back this next week. And the reason is that we've got $10 trillion worth of market cap that's going to be reporting earnings next week. Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Tesla, uh, financials like Visa and MasterCard, some huge companies. And, you know, and what's been happening is that the earnings reports so far have been very good, but over half of the companies that have reported great earnings haven't seen their stock prices increase. So we've got a lot of things going on. I think this is something that people need to, to really pay close attention to. Coming up through this next year, there's over $5 trillion in cash on the sidelines. That's with a T? With a T, that's more than we've ever had. It's 25% of GDP sitting on the sidelines that is potential to come back into the market. So if you if you want to be able to participate maybe in what you missed out on before or maybe you want to continue to have the same kind of opportunities, do you want to miss out on this? Do you want to be sitting on the sidelines when that money comes in? This is a great time to understand uh, how the markets function, learn to take advantage of them. And, and the important thing is, I think that people already know one of the most important components of trading. It's, it's really basically the same kinds of things that you do in your everyday life. And those things apply to trading and investing. Unfortunately, you do exactly the opposite. For example, when you want to buy a car, I, I'm guessing most of you don't go into a dealership and say, hey, don't give me any of your your your, your games here. Don't play games with me. I want to pay the highest price for the car possible. <laughs> no, no, you go the opposite. Uh, when you want to sell your house, however, you want to get the highest price possible. So we know we're supposed to buy low and sell high, but because of the fact that we're human beings, we have emotions, and we're being manipulated by the people with huge amounts of money, we do exactly the opposite. You're exactly right. I mean, I'm glad you brought up earlier the the market is very sensitive, especially with that proposal that happened on Thursday. I mean, a lot of people think, okay, buy the rumor, sell the news. Correct. That's what, right. That was that kind was of the opposite of what happened. They sold the rumor. What's going to yep. happen with the news? We don't know. But that's why it's so important to understand price, how, mm. how price action works on a price chart. And it's that supply and demand factor. When there's more buyers, that's demand, price will go up. More sellers, the price will go down. That's supply. And it's just understanding how that actually works in the financial markets. 
Al, coming up next, you were talking about how the markets are manipulated. Mm -hmm. I want to get into that and and also how maybe these news outlets or TV or internet, whatever that may be, could be conditioning people to do what they want them to do. This is Josh and Al, Investing with Confidence. We will be right back. 